Hey, great evening to you all. I hope that this morning when you got up, you were all able to be grateful to be alive again another day in this experience. And I hope that you were able to set your high vibe by telling yourself that you are grateful and that you are amazing and that you are magical and that you're actually the magician in your life. And you can have absolutely anything that you truly desire. Because factually speaking, if you can create the picture in your brain, it must happen. Because that's the job of the brain. So what is your brain full of? Is it full of things you want to create? Or is it filled with stuff that you've already lived? So therefore, then you're creating that instantly. Got to check that stuff. So a lot of a lot of great questions that are going to be answered today. Hey, Josh, I see you out there. Howdy, bro. Love, loads of love to you. Guys, so some questions. All right. First one being, Toby, I see you got your stove. How did it happen? Listen, don't worry about how it happened. Somebody gave a shit enough to make it happen for me. That's as simple as that. And there are a lot of... Hey, mentor. Hey, Josh. Love you lots. And you know what? Like I say, there's a lot of great individuals out there in this life. There is. Whether we're surrounded by them immediately in our vicinity or not, the world is not full of just shitty people. There's a lot of greatness in the world. Well, that's how my stove happened. Okay, simple. And, you know, that changes everything for me because that was another question that I'm going to address. Somebody's talking about stress. Yes, it's a huge stressful time of the year. And with the magnitude of the stress that everybody's feeling right now, yeah, I get it. But what am I stressed about? Nothing. Nothing. Am I worried about Christmas? No. Am I worried about the holidays? No. Am I worried about even tomorrow? No. Not at all. Should I wake up tomorrow? Because, you know, what you guys don't realize is this. And I'm going to drop it today with some real truth, okay? Okay. Do you realize that you die every night in your sleep? Every night. Why do I say that? Because when you go into your REM sleep, which is your paralytic sleep, and your body is completely paralyzed, well, your soul leaves your body anyway. So, you know, when I say, I hope you're grateful that you woke up the next morning, well, factually speaking, you know, I personally know of a young man who didn't wake up from his sleep in the past week. See, and people don't realize it, but yeah, every night when you go to bed and you go to sleep, well, there is that chance that your spirit doesn't re-enter your body and wake you up the next day. That's facts. So this is why I tell all of you guys, the minute you open your eyes, I hope you realize how lucky you are to be alive. Primarily. Okay? And that's facts. Because you actually think that you're dreaming but this is the real dream. Okay? And our body may need some sleep, but our soul doesn't. And that's facts too. So, on that note, on that question, hey. Yeah, you die every night. Every night. When you go into your paralytic sleep. Because your soul leaves your body. 
So knowing that and go look this stuff up because I'm not talking shit. So go and find the research because it's there. How do you think I know? And this is why factually my body does not go into a paralytic sleep. Ever. Because of the magnitude in which my survival has to be ensured. So how does that happen? Is my body does not go into a paralytic sleep where my soul leaves my body. Not at this point of the game. My body has been too damaged and had, has been, look, when you cause unhabitable conditions within your own body, your soul cannot survive in it. So, because of the state of my body, what it has been through and what I have healed from and come back from, my body, my soul, does not allow my body to go into a REM sleep. It's been like that for over 20 years. That ensures my survival. So, Understand that you have every reason to be grateful every day that you wake up. Okay? Primarily, just for your existence. Because that's when you can hold the right vibe within your being. And you're not going to allow the things externally to affect you. So another question that I'm going to touch today too was this. Toby, how do you avoid stressful situations? I don't avoid anything literally I don't avoid it nothing everything is head on oh why because it may not make me feel good for a moment no you know what head on no matter what it is I don't avoid stress ever because nothing to me is stressful unless I tell myself it is. See, I don't sit there and go, oh, why is this happening to me? Or what? And make up excuses. Oh, and, oh, I wish it could be like this. Or oh, I wish it could be like that. No, it is what it is. And if it has no meaning in my life, it can't affect me. So I don't avoid stressful situations. Because they are not stressful situations unless that is how I perceive them to be. And everything's for learning. Everything. So what may another may see as, oh, I have to avoid that because it's stressful or, oh, blah, blah, blah. nah, me, I'm head in there, dive in there like a pool and say, all right, what am I learning in this? This is about, you know, this is has to do with a lot of the, the universal law of the cyclical, you know, the flow. You can come in and out of situations with ease. And everything's okay when everything's for learning. It doesn't matter what the situation is. But as long as you're coming from a place of stress, well, then you're already fight, flight, or freeze. So how are you even handling this situation if you're coming from that kind of response already. You're not. So I can't do that to myself. I see things for what they are. And I handle them accordingly. And me knowing that anything is possible and anything is valid should I make it happen. Then it changes everything. So I can take a very stressful situation that another is in and it does not stress me out. I logically maneuver through it and assist in helping them remove the stress of it. That's who I am, naturally. Yeah, I don't see things the same as others do. I have a neutral standpoint. So being neutral to things is not being stressed out by it and not being excited by it. You see, I don't let myself to get excited by anything or stressed out by anything. 
I maintain a neutral zone within my own being for my well-being at all times, no matter the cost. Now, there's a lot of things that I do, which was another question. One of the questions was, Toby, what do you do when you're stressed out or do, you know? Look, the minute I start to feel stressed out, I correct that immediately. I don't let that fester into a mood and fester into a, a state of being. No, if there's something that's arising that doesn't make me feel right, right away, I fix it. Because that's happening inside of me. And if I'm out of balance at all, I am not healing. So I have to maintain my balance and my equilibrium to infinitely flow. Now, in order to do that, I have to find my neutral crossing point. And I cannot be swayed by either side. Can I get upset by situations? Was another question. Toby, do you, do you get upset at things? Well, it's only natural to feel a little bit upset by certain things that you hear or certain things that are said to you or certain things that you really don't agree with. But you cannot allow yourself to embody that for longer than 60 to 90 seconds because that is the restabilization of your being. You see? So, yes, things can upset you when they don't feel good. Big Head, I can hear you, eh? And it seems like you waited for me to go live before you started that. Thank you. Yeah, my dog chewing on her paws from walking outside. But, Julie, hey, Julie, hi, my beautiful, hi, my beautiful, how you doing? So, yeah, Tense. I was talking about stressful situations and issues. Me, I deal with things head on. I don't allow things to accumulate in my life. And I don't allow, like, yeah, I can get upset by something. Like something could irk me not right. But that's the totality of it. It either feels good or it doesn't. And from when it doesn't, that's as far as it goes. It just doesn't feel good. I don't like it. I'll voice my opinion and it ends there. Simple, because if I don't, it's going to escalate into something within myself that will unleash a total different magnitude. I'm good in you. I'm good. I got a stove yesterday. Yeah, somebody helped me get a stove. Yeah, an amazing man. Amazing. <coughs> so I'm happy. I made a spaghetti sauce last night. If you want some, let me know. It's really, really good. <laughs> I needed, that's why I didn't even do a live yesterday. I was like, no, I need a spaghetti sauce tonight. <laughs> so, yeah, guys, I was asked, what are there a couple of things that you do when you're feeling out of sorts or upset or whatever? I, I correct them immediately. I cannot allow myself to not feel good for longer than 60 to 90 seconds because that produces illness within my body and I know that so what do I do when I need to I go to YouTube and I watch frequencies and I listen to motivational speakers and I remind myself of all of the things that I do have to be grateful for like breathing alone see because what I've already come back from is already like Hey, like there's nothing worse to come back from than what I've already lived. So now being alive and having the opportunity just to live and being healed and being a better being now than I ever have been in my life. Well, guess what? Why would I not want to maintain this for myself? Because it doesn't matter what I've already lived. I've already lived it. It's gone. It's in the past. It no longer exists. And you know, I had a great reminder the other day when I saw somebody's post about 
there was a post saying about why the rear view mirror is so small when you're driving the car and why your windshield is so big. And it's not something that I don't know, but it's something that I was reminded of. You know, you can't look back. That is mere experience. That experience of whatever you've lived has given you skills. It is, hey, Bobby Lynn, I love you, cuz. I love you. I hope you're enjoying celebrating, uh, getting festive down there. I love you lots. <laughs> Even if you're a grown woman. Um, yeah, but guys, look, honestly, you got to keep that vision going forward because everything that you've lived, yeah, okay, you've lived it. But it no longer is relevant to your life today. And you cannot hold on to things today that are no longer relevant to you or your life today. See? And we hang on to things and they affect us and they shouldn't. Okay? You really... I love you more. <laughs> but honestly, we really have to... It doesn't matter what we've lived. And what happens is we get stuck believing that we are the accumulation of our life experiences and what we've had to live and the things we've endured. And, you know, hey, those, you know, when you want to look at all of that, well, as hard as it was to live, well, is to the magnitude of the greatness that you walked away from it with. Why? Because it's another universal law. There's always an equal opposite reaction. So as bad as you may have believed it was, well, there is an equal opposite reaction to that. So there was just as much good in it. But where we choose to focus is what determines what we take from it. So, you know, instead of putting a good or a bad onto anything, even when it's in determining or looking at your life experience, just see it as an experience. You can't remove any piece of your life and expect to be who you are today. You can't. You are today who you are. Because of what you've already lived. And you're uniquely you. There's no knockoffs. There's no duplicates. You have a unique energy signature on the planet for a reason. You really do. And we all matter. Equally. There's not another that matters more than another on the planet. And you know, honestly... When we take a look at the person that we are as an individual, realize that you do wake up every day to be a brand new person with a brand new experience, with a brand new clean slate, a brand new canvas, if you want to say it like that. You can create anything to be for your day and who you choose to be as an individual, regardless of what you've lived regardless of what you've overcome, regardless of whatever greatness. You know, nothing defines you in this world more than your own belief about who you believe yourself to be. You know, there's a lot of stress. Yeah, I get it. But it doesn't have to be like that within your being. It really doesn't. It's a simple choice. It really is. So guys, I really encourage you guys to stay at peace within your being, that neutral point, and allow people to be who they're going to be. Let them be. You have no governance over anybody but your own being. And that again is... <coughs> The only person that you are responsible for. 
But you have to see whether you're owning the responsibility to your own being first. Of being okay primarily. At all costs. You see, that's what I do. I don't engage with anything that does not feel right in my heart for me. That doesn't mean that I'm judging the situation or the person or the place or the scenario. No, because what is not comforting to me is very comforting to another, depending on their belief systems and who they are. But we have to allow and allot people to be who they choose to be rightfully. That's their birthright. And there's way too many people trying to change people in this world. The change, the biggest change, has to come from within. It doesn't matter what you're doing for another. It doesn't matter what you're doing for the world. The only thing that matters is how you're treating you. So you have to put yourself in a neutral state where you are okay, no matter what. And that's not dependent on another person. You see, when I talk about owning my being, self-accountability is huge. I'm accountable to myself and to my creator for what I allow to flow through my being because Primarily, my birthright is to thrive as a creator on the planet. Abundantly so. And the only thing that stops us from acquiring everything in that creative magnitude is our own beings. According to what we believe, according to the programming, the conditioning, and all of that. So, self-accountability is huge. So if I allow myself to feel any other thing than a high vibrational overstanding of who I genuinely am, well, then that causes detrimental effects within the body. I had to live it to learn it. So being the person that I am and affected by negativity the way I am, there is no way that I will come out of my neutral state of being within me for any person, place, or thing on the planet. Why? Because I matter. You see? But I have to be self-accountable to that. If I know certain things and lifestyles and certain people literally make me ill from what? From me allotting an energetic cord to them. And the transfer of it all is just, I, there's just too much negativity to transmute. Well, I get sick. So, I know that. Big head. Big E. I know that, so I don't do it. And this is why a lot of people have... That was another question, too. Toby, you seem very heartless for somebody who talks about being in their heart space. You seem very cold. No, not at all. I love myself enough to allow my body to be in a loving state all the time towards its own being because I'm in a healing state. So I can't walk around in my experience allowing everything to affect me because it has no right to. See the difference? Yeah, we're all connected. But you know what? You have to allow people to be who they're going to be. Simple as that. Saves you a lot of headache. Saves you a lot of heartache. And I realize more than ever that you can't change people no matter what knowledge you bring them. 
if they are not ready to acquire it, they won't by their own choice. So you have to let that happen. And you got to let people learn on their own the hard way. You know why? Because I had to learn the hard way. Life wasn't easy for me. But what did that do for me? It made me resilient. It made me strong. It made me very skilled. It made me very aware. That's all greatness that came out of all of that. So this is why I say all the time, there's no avoidance in anything. It's a bring it on attitude, but you better be ready for what you're asking to me to bring up. Like it just, it's a total thing because, yeah, that's just how it works. But, hey, great question about what do I do? I don't allow things to stress me, number one. I don't allow people to hold meaning in my life, number two. Because people can only affect you to the magnitude of which you give them meaning. And you do that. Nobody else does that. So, like that correlates with the question. People tell it, somebody told me I was, I appear very heartless. No, I'm not heartless. Not at all. But I'm also not going to, my love is unconditional. But that doesn't a lot people to be, uh, like unconditionally messed up with me either. And it seems like the more I love people, it, it gives them more leeway to not be right. So I just, you know what? Snip, 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 snip. Clean up. Cut up the energetic cords because what I do for people, I already know. There's nobody doing that for me. So I have to maintain an equilibrium in my own being all the time, no matter what. What you don't do for yourself, nobody's doing for you. So you got to also see what you're allowing in your life. Like, I would rather personally, another question was, Toby, you don't go to parties, you don't go to this, you don't go, we don't see you out, da da da, da. You know why? Because I'm good. I'm good. Avoiding all of it. Why? Because three quarters of the conversations that you hear nowadays, you ask somebody how they're doing, the minute they open their mouth, it's uh, ugh, verbal diarrhea and the vibe goes like this instead of like this. So I just can't, I just can't. And a lot of people are feeling it right now and I just can't be bothered with any of it. I can't. Because when you hear what they're complaining about, and you know it's so superficial in comparison to what you've already lived. It's hard. You know how difficult it is for me to hear somebody whine and complain and cry about their life after living what I've lived? So if I can maintain a vibe of growth and healing and no matter what I have lived and endured, it's very hard for me to have conversations with ungrateful, miserable people that are using these outings as an attempt to make themselves feel better. I, I I can't do it. Can't do it. These makeup parties for being a shitty person year round. No, I, I don't do it. I'm a good person year round. Okay? So I celebrate me every day. It's like a holiday now. <laughs> Literally. I I'm so different than the norm. And I don't stay away from people because people are messed up. No, I stay away from people because of how it affects me. There's no judgment on other people. Let them be who they're going to be. Literally. Because that's who they're born to be. And it's very rare that somebody can push past the programming, the conditioning, and the life I've had and sit here and preach wellness to anybody. It's quite a contradiction from what I've lived. But that's okay. Not many can do what I'm, what I'm doing. And even the doctor told me the other day, Toby, I've never, even in all my years of being a doctor, I've never seen somebody survive what you've survived. Well, I survived it for a reason. To be exactly who I am today and not be shifted by not another person, place, or thing on the planet. 
literally. It's not too many people that can keep an optimistic outlook. And literally even, hey, come on. Sitting here not messed up again? Hey, come on. You know, got rid of the weight that was holding me down and now I'm climbing. Like, no, but everybody gets too comfortable sitting in that density of, oh, poor me. Oh, instead of picking themselves up and doing something about it. And that's why I have the hardest time conversating when socializing with people. Because they're all about the poor me syndrome. And I'm the farthest thing from it. You know, people open their mouth and all they're telling you is the reasons why they can't. And all of the excuses about why they are the way they are instead of using all that as reasons for change. No, I looked at my life and looked what it gave me and looked at the people around me and looked at my family and said, you know what? No wonder I have to change. Change it all. Because they're all, okay. You know what? Let me not get rude. Literally. No wonder why I have to be the who I am. And that's okay too. Because I will be exactly that person. No matter what. Because those who cannot do what I've done, <laughs> they don't have a relevance to me. They really don't. And I have yet to see somebody pull off what I have. And when I do, their judgment and their opinion will matter. And until then, they're never and will never be on my magnitude of who I am. And they can believe as much as they want to believe that they are. But the day that they finally walk the pit of hell, they'll realize that they hadn't yet. But that's, I've already done that. I'm like the phoenix out of the fire. I've been forged in fire to hold the love that I do. So that's why I must be who I am. Bring the biggest change that this planet probably has ever seen after what I've been through. It's all good. Guys, another question was, uh, oh, yeah. Was there anything that I had suggested for somebody to read? Listen, there's something that I suggest you guys go listen to. I, You know what? I'm not one that likes to read. So I'm even shocked that I came out here and read my books for all of you guys. Because I don't like to read. I really don't. I like to... I can be listening to an audio book and doing all kinds of things at the same time. The way my brain processes things, I, I multi-process many things at once. My brain is not, it is, the connectivity and the processing of my brain uh, is very different magnitude than most. So, yes, there are some things that I encourage you guys all to go and listen to. Um, one of them is, there was a book that I read a long time ago by Ivana Von Slant, or what's her name? You know what? I should look it up before I tell you guys because I'm going to give you the wrong information. That's how much I remember. Um, something about loving yourself in the meantime. There was a book about loving yourself in the meantime, which I read a long time ago. And that helps you really go in and whoo, clean out the basement of your house. Yeah, and meaning your own being. So that was a good book by Ivanya Van Zant. Van Zant is her last name. I remember. But yeah, that... A great, great book. And that book changed my life, literally. Um, Another one. Book of Enoch. If you guys haven't gone and heard the Emerald Tablets... 
and know what anything about Enoch is. If you guys want some real eye-opening knowledge, go and listen to that. That is uh, by far one of the... It really... For those who are not fully aware and awake, well, if you take the time to listen to the books of Enoch, you're going to highly understand who Metatron is. And these are things that I had to do to understand why was I being guided by Metatron and why was I forced to stamp the books with Metatron's cube. Like, this is all solely guided. So I needed to go do some research, too. After my awakening and my, okay, what is this really all about? Like, I'm being flooded with knowledge, but, okay, I don't see anything factual here that you're telling me. So where do I go? Where do I look? I need a correlation. So I was directed to the books of Enoch. Three books of Enoch. They were taken out of the Bible. Well, you know, those are really relevant books. And I audio listened to them. There was another one, um, The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success by Deepak Chopra. I've got that stuff tattooed on my arm, literally. But that was 15 years ago. Yeah, so these are things that I've done for myself years ago. To be able to even, you see, had I not done certain inner work and certain awakening within my own being, soulfully, spiritually, I never would have been able to get past beating death the way I have. I needed to know my soul's power to be able to do that. So I've been on spiritual journey a long time. Another person asked again, and I brought up tarot cards too. Yes, I do tarot, but I don't do tarot just like that. Because it's all energy exchange. Everything is energy exchange. And some things you just don't want to know. Some things are just meant to be found within. And to be honest, I don't need tarot cards. I'm highly connected and channeled constantly. If I want answers, I ask, and they're there. Bang, bang, direct, direct answer. I don't have to go into a state of meditation. No, I speak and I get answers. It's direct, it's communication. So I don't need tarot cards. Others may need tarot cards for justification and validation of what I'm trying to tell them, but I know. Do I have my cards still? Yes. The question was there, I'm answering it. T but I don't need tarot. Tarot is basically used when somebody else doesn't believe what you're just telling them. And you know what? Less is more. So I don't like to... When I know something's going to happen which I, I get premonitions and I get where I know certain things are going to happen. But I also know that I cannot interrupt it from happening. That I'm being told about it as a warning. Okay? And there's a big, huge thing about, you know what, we create karma, yes, but there's another big thing about... Constantly interrupting another's karma. And literally, that's what I do with people. I interrupt their karma. And that's why I have to energetically cut ties with certain individuals on a constant basis. Anything new that floods in, if it's not... Whatever, I have to let it go back to sea, no matter what it is. Why? Because I can no longer interrupt anybody's karma. So, I have been governed of that and told that. So, now I must abide by that. I can be of assistance to another. But... I have been interrupting people's karma for 
many, 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 many years. How? By unconditionally loving them no matter what. No matter who they chose to be. Well, I'm not allowed to do that anymore. So I'm not allowed to energetically extend unconditional love to any one individual, no matter what title it is, should they choose to be a shitty person. It's as simple as that. Why? Because I can no longer interrupt people's karmas, karma that they create for themselves. And by me being involved and energetically giving a shit when they don't I am interrupting their karma because of my energy and the power of my being universally I know that now I didn't know that for years but it's all in the learning you know when you take deeper dives but I when I'm told to do something I do it I'm soul led I am governed by my prime creator I'm not governed by my family, my friends, my experience, none of that. And I'm definitely not governed by any person, place, or thing. I have zero karmic attachments. Zero. Nothing means anything to me. None of it. That's how it has to be. To make sure everybody served their karma rightfully. Yeah, because just by me giving a shit when they don't, I interrupt their karma. That's why you got to be careful where you're putting your energy, people. Big time. Big time, big time. Another question was, why don't I post anything about my grandkids? <coughs> or my kids online? Because I respect them. That's why. My daughter's not online, nor does she want her children online. So why would I do that? I won't. See, this is a lot about the karmic cleanup and generational curses and things that have to change for the new lineages. I respect what my daughter would like for her children. I respect the choices that my daughter has made for herself. I respect the woman that my daughter has grown into. And I respect that I've given her all of the tools to govern herself accordingly. So, if she's not out on social media, and if she doesn't have my grandchildren on social media. Which nowadays with AI and all of these chatbots and everything, any image can be taken and used in any type of manner. And it's a digital footprint that cannot be erased. Well, why would I not respect that? I respect that fully. And I also think that my daughter is an amazing woman for making the choices that she has. So I, I'm not going to post things about my daughter's personal life and my grandchildren because she is, no, she's not into this. This is how much change is leaked down to my generations after me and for my grandchildren. Very much different that, than what's been leaked through the generations before. Trust that. Okay? And that's why I've had to be who I am and remain alive and do everything that I have and still have the, the outlook that I do. Because I actually said, yeah, hey, I'm going to do it. It's about time that shit got cleaned up. I'll do it. Well, I've done it. That's why my kid, my grandkids are not all over my page. 
The stuff that I post on my page is for other people to either get a joke or get uplifted in any way, shape, or form. There's nothing on my page that is personal. And this is what you guys don't all, what, what you don't realize. A lot of people post stuff according to what they're living. Not me. I come across stuff and I get a giggle or a chuckle or a laugh or it made me feel all right. Repost. It's got nothing to do with me. There's not another me on the planet and Toby's okay. Why? Because I choose to be no matter what. And I'm good. I got a high vibe. I'm, I'm good. My body is healing. The pounds are dropping. I feel great. Hey, I got my stove yesterday. You know, and it's funny because I came out of that relationship being in a real situation and all that anybody wanted from me was what they needed from me. Nobody helped me. They just wanted to knock me lower than I already was. That's not family. That's not friends. That's people that have manipulated, abuse you. Snip, snip, snip. Thanks for uh, waking me up to that too. Time for a major cleanup. Not only on the planet, but in my life too. Great. Sayonara. Ciao, ciao. You know how much free time and effort that I have for myself now? Come on. Those who matter will. But will they mean anything to the point to affect me? Never. Never. Because that's my choice alone. Guys, I really hope and pray that you can maintain a vibe of wellness within yourself. Completely balanced and stable. Neutral to everything. Because if you allow any other state within your being, it's by choice alone. Yeah, and guess what? All of this, oh, I want to be happy crap? Guess what? It's not a destination. And even being happy still puts your body out of whack. Neutral is your PowerPoint. Just being. Do you know how to do that? Well, try it. Just be. Don't be happy. Don't be sad. Don't be this. Don't be that. Just be. Okay? Because that is your true balance point. That is the neutral point that I keep telling you guys about. Is the just be. Now, are you able to just be? Calmly and quietly within your own being with no distraction, no noise, no... That'll tell you whether you're in balance or not. But while you're distracted from all of that, you'll never know. Guys, take the focus outside and put it inside. Make sure that you get to that balance point within your being, which is a neutral. No emotion. It either feels right or it doesn't. And that's the extent of the thinking that you need to do. Is from the true brain, your heart. The rest of the thoughts that follow are coming from your belief systems that are automatically running on shit. Simple. <laughs> Don't allow it for yourself. Guys, I love y'all. Set that high vibe for the week. Going into a fresh week. <laughs> Enjoy it. No matter what. Because you can do that. And if you don't like what you're living... Change it. You don't like how you're feeling? Change it. You have the power to do that. By simple choice alone. Well, it's mind over matter. All the time. Well, what produces the energy for the mind over matter is the infinite, unconditional love of your soul giving you life. So you have the capacity and the power to do anything. So what are you going to do with that? Hey, Carol. Love you. Love you lots. But what are you going to do with that? Because if you can't do anything, 
It's your own self that's stopping you. So yeah, sometimes if you're not happy where you are, well, yeah, you got to look at where you put yourself. Just the way I did. But what are you, I'm going to avoid that? No, you head on, deal with things, head on, no avoidance, fix it. It doesn't make you feel right. Make sure that it does. Because when you're not feeling right, well, you're the only one feeling that too. Nobody else can feel that. Just because you tell them how you're feeling doesn't mean that they even have an inclination of what you're feeling. Are they even emotionally intelligent to even hear what you're saying to them? Because most people listen to respond instead of actually listening to what somebody's saying. So what do I mean by that? Oh, well, shit. Somebody's saying to you, do you take the first three words and then you're sitting there holding on to your response and not hearing a goddamn thing that's being said to you? <laughs> That's what happens to the majority of brains that you're talking to. So when you realize that too, you're not going to put in so much effort into even talking to people. Because they don't even hear half of what you're saying. Literally. Because they're not emotionally intelligent enough to even hold a proper conversation. Facts. Why? Because everybody seems to be listening to respond nowadays. Instead of listening to hear. And that's a huge problem with me too. It's like the more clear and concise and I speak, the more I'm misunderstood because I don't prance people around in circles and add all bullshit filler into the conversation they don't understand. That's what's been common lately. So, you got to let people be who they're going to be. <laughs> Ella, I know so many. Yeah, I know me too. Hey, Carol, it's crazy. It is so crazy. <laughs> but that's why I love conversations with you. I do. I love talking to you. I really do. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so guys, there's a lot of things. I had a lot of questions. I packed this with all kinds of stuff. Somebody even asked me, why didn't I do a live yesterday? So I guess the lives are actually effective, though, because somebody was missing the live yesterday to the point where they were really like, and I was like, look, when you feel like that, just reach out to me. I'll take five minutes to uplift you or whatever it is, you know, like, if it's that bad, <laughs> you know, but I'm going to encourage everybody today too. It's only as bad as you think it is. Literally. Literally. So don't give so much power to things that should not have that kind of weight or relevance in your life. It's okay. It really is. It's okay. And it's going to be what it is. And just, you have to allow an allowance. See, you have to be so true to yourself that you understand that others must remain true to themselves too. And that's why we are not supposed to try to change people. You either unconditionally love and support them, or you don't. Come on. You were too busy baking. <laughs> no, actually, last night I made a spaghetti sauce. I made a spaghetti sauce. But you know what I am about to bake? I have all of that weed butter. And I have all of that, that uh, oil that I'm going to bake with. I'm going to make all kinds of Christmas goodies and go and deliver them to people that need to relax a little bit. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have a whole bunch of that butter in my fridge. 
I won't say on here where I got it from, but I think we both know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll never forget that, eh? You know what? I'm going to say it. My brother one time, he was so fed up of hearing my sister and my mother bitch at each other while we were at the country one time that he loaded a spaghetti sauce with some pot and put them both to bed. Oh, yeah. He did it. <laughs> he did it. He was like, oh, okay, I can't take this anymore. He loaded it up, put them both to bed. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but yeah, I've got some, um, uh, some weed butter and I've got some weed oil and, uh, I think I'm going to do some Christmas bacon with that. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Why not? I don't have to go to work <laughs> and I, you know, Hey, I'm jolly every day. So why not turn up some frost for this for the Christmas holiday? Why not? Guys, I love y'all. Have a great night. Some, you know, some asked me a lot of questions and I had to come out here and answer all the questions. But, uh, yeah, I'm okay. And I want you guys all to be also. So take whatever you can from these lives, eh? Guys, I'm going to remind you. Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. I think, I think it is. I'm going to have to try to convince him to make those gummies again. <laughs> um, yeah, guys, enjoy yourselves. Don't be stressed out by life. Because if you're creating stress within your own being, you're not good. You're not in balance. And you're making things harder on yourself. And you're definitely not healing if you're trying to. So be okay with yourself. Be okay with your life. No matter what it is, it's okay. Be all right with it. <laughs> and if you don't like it, change it. Simple. Guys, I love you all. Have a great night. Peace. <laughs>